ago we did a reconstruction of our wastewater system, or a large part of it. Uh, Doug Brees and I went to Seattle to the, uh, uh, the Economic Development, Federal Economic Development Agency, I think it's called. And we secured a line for over $8 million, which we wound up not having to use, by the way. We were able to fund that without borrowing any money or getting a grant from the federal government. But uh, we worked on the wastewater side, but now we have to work on the fresh, on the uh, potable water side. Um, we have pipes in the ground that are 80 years old. Uh, we have had some failures, pipes starting to break. Uh, we need to start getting on this. This is, you know, all over the country, you know, I, can, I talk to people in the water industry, in the wastewater industry, and, you know, think about, you know, some place like Boston, New York, where they have pipes that are 150 years old. Well, we're not as bad as they are. But all over the place, there is an infrastructure uh, backlog, and we're going to have to start addressing that. And admittedly, you know, these last couple of years, there's been a couple, couple of other big things that have kind of maybe pushed this to the side a little bit. But we're going to have to get on that. We're looking at probably something in the neighborhood of 31 million dollars to do this job right. Uh, you know, like we need to be aggressively looking at. Yes, uh, as we did with the wastewater, maybe there's, there's grant money out there, maybe there's some, some other money, federal money, state money we can tap into. We have to fight it, maybe there isn't. And if there isn't, then we're looking at, at issuing a, a, a bond issue. And uh, we've got pretty good credit, so uh, you know, we should get a decent interest rate, but uh, we need to really try to find ways to finance that. But that's a serious issue. That's a, you know, really at the top of my list, in many ways, as the things that we need to do. Uh, infrastructure, uh, capital improvements uh, are issues that are always, always on the table. Sometimes they get shoved aside, sometimes, uh, you know, we put things off, but you can only put things off so far before they come back to bite you. Now we move to the next topic, uh, recreational opportunities. Let's look around the city. Uh, we've got Miranda Park, the Boys and Girls Club, Beach Park, Community Center here, uh, uh, Boulder Park, up in the north end of town. We've been really pretty neglected. We have uh, uh, a lot of capacity in this city. It's not being used very well. Uh, so we have decided, under the leadership of our, our new city manager, Cynthia Huss, to um, Try to find a way to make better opportunities for the people in the city for, for recreation. Um, you know, and we've, we've gone out with some requests for proposals, and uh, we're waiting returns on those. Uh, you know, we had we had a concessionaire running the tennis program for a while. Um, we started auditing what they were doing. We're not very happy with what happened there. We know that can be run better. We know we can provide better access to. Uh, to adults and children in this community. We, we've got so much so much capacity here that it's just not being used the way it should be. So we're trying to find ways to, uh, to improve that and uh, get you know, perhaps operators in here that, uh, that can run programs and uh, in an effective, cost-effective way. So um, you know, we'll stay tuned on that. We should know more in the fall. Now, Triumphs, I've got a 73 Spitfire Mark IV at home if anybody wants to buy it. It's going to be Triumphs. I don't, I, I, I don't know if we would want to call this a Triumph, but you know, other cities in our area have passed what's called an urban camping ordinance. Uh, you know, they had problems, you know, this started up in Santa Barbara with, you know, people sleeping up the street and, and Ventura has adopted it, and it has, other cities have adopted these ordinances. Uh, some of the folks that, that are homeless have started moving down here. And, uh, you know, so this is admittedly a tough, intractable problem. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it's one thing to be caught out, you know, at, at one night at a time. Um, in my younger days, did I ever get caught up and I have to sleep outside? Well, maybe. <laughs> but, <laughs> 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 uh, 
But if you see, if you say, if you set up a friendly campground, if you build a shelter in, in a public area, this is causing a problem. We had, you know, I had the citizen contact me you know, with, the, with the, uh, the way the piers, the, the sand under the piers eroding. Uh, somebody was starting to build a little house in there, you know, mattresses and. You know, um, and it's it's very very tough. I know we've been, I've, had, I've had citizens contact me. You know what can we do about this? One of the things we did uh, was pass our own urban camping ordinance. This gives Chief Gager and his guys, uh, you know, a tool that they can use to to contact these folks and, and try to get them into a system if they if they if they can, uh, or at least have them have them move on. So we don't have, you know, we don't become a, a permanent shanty town, quite frankly. And uh, this is uh, this just took effect this past month, and uh, uh, we've had a number of contacts with people. If I look at the statistics here, about 30 percent of the calls we've been getting at the police department are related to transits. 30 percent. So that's that's a large. Uh, burden on, on our resources, a lot of man hours go into that, um, and uh, hopefully this will, this will help, help the situation as far as, as uh, keeping areas, public areas clear, reducing the burden on our police, uh, and, uh, and making this a more attractive place for everybody. Um, now I'd like to uh, Move on to uh, and so talking about the budget, uh, we were able in this past year. Our staff was, and, and, and you know, I mean, and, you know, as a mayor, city council member, it's like you know, we like to take the credit for things, but I mean, really, when you come down to it, all we do is vote yes. Uh, you know, the staff does all the work, and we were able to come up with three hundred and seventy-seven thousand dollars in savings. Now. We lost about $94,000 in revenue. Some of that was the uh, uh, redevelopment uh, transfer. Uh, some of that was, you know, down, economic downturn. You know, redevelopment for this city was cr critical. We're, we're a city that did make good use of what was a good law. And it was an important part of our, our budget. And to lose that was, was just, a devastating blow, eight million dollars right off uh, on a, a one-time shot, and then uh, continuing losses year after year. So we've been having to deal with that, uh, and to come up with savings of three hundred seventy thousand dollars is pretty darn good. And our staff deserves to be congratulated on that. Uh, uh, and, and, and as I said. Uh, in times of crisis, are also times of opportunity. This is a good time to look at it, at your organization. How is it structured? How is it functioning? Um, how can you streamline things? How can you make things run better? Well, uh, you know, with you know, with our, with, our, with city manager and us and our staff sitting down, we actually were able to reduce the number of departments. We had seven departments before. Now we have five. Uh, there are four. As we say, the business full-time equivalent uh, employee positions uh, that have been reduced. So not only are we running cheaper with less staff, more streamlined, uh, it, and it, we should be giving better service. You know, people are, are being asked to do more and and and, and stand up and, and uh, work to capacity. And maybe that, I don't say that wasn't happening before, but it is happening now. And you know, I see you have friends from the library here. You know, the president of the Friends of the Library, somebody I know, past president, probably four years as president currently. Yeah, four years as president. Uh, and uh, we are, you know, we are. I, I have to say that we are going to continue continuing support support of the library. <laughs> I mean. You know, I'd be in a lot of trouble if I didn't say that. <laughs> but the other thing, and going back to uh, capital maintenance, capital approval, we've let things slide over the past few years. A lot of people have. Things have been tough. 
Uh, we're behind on maintenance. When I was elected in 1994, one of the first things I said is, gee, you know, we got to catch up on our, our capital maintenance and our infrastructure. Uh, you know, every every election cycle when a new councilman comes on, the first thing they say is, you know, we got to catch up on our, 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 our capital improvement and our maintenance. Um, and sometimes we make fits and starts, and, and but then something comes along and we fall back. Well, uh, in our current budget, we are going to be building a reserve fund. We're putting $4 million in there right now. We talked about the water uh, pipes, $31 million there. So $4 million is a start, but uh, I'm hopeful that we can continue, uh, continue down the line with each budget to be putting funds into a capital reserve. We need to be doing that. You know, we've been talking about that for years. We're finally, I think we're, we're finally getting some solid progress in that regard. And speaking of solid progress, we've got the changing skyline of Port Miami. Um, you know, we're not a, not a city that has a lot of places to develop, so when we do, we have to try to do it right. And uh, those of you who are familiar with the uh, property behind the shopping center on Victoria, um, that to me has always been the diamond in the rough. Tremendous opportunity for someone for, for the right kind of project. I think we have.